My name is uh, Harriet Adelaide Kindness, uh, spelled H A double R I E T, the middle name Adelaide. A D E L A I D E. My last name is Kindness, K I N D, as in dear, N E double S. I was born October 15th, 1941. And where were you born, Harriet? Uh, Red Springs, Wisconsin. Red Springs? Yeah, that's up by Morgan Siding. Okay. Uh, yes, that's and could you give me the name of your parents? Uh, yes, my mother, who is full blood Oneida, uh, is named Cynthia Eve Antone. And my father, who is a full blood brother town Indian, his name is Lloyd Francis Kindness. And, and where did they reside? Near Morgan Siding? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. And your grandparents? Could you, do you know your grandparents on your yes. side? Yes, I do. Um, my uh, grandfather was named uh, Dixon. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, Wilson Antone, and he was married to Eunice Skenador. And the uh, that was that was the only only the grandparents I have, and on the brother town side it was uh, Homer Kindness, who was a medicine man, and he was married to Francis Niles. And they were both brother town. Was Francis Niles a brother town also? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And do you, do you know where they live? Oh, right in brother town. Uh, my grandfather. Uh, Homer kindness thought he did travel around in the the, ver the state, you know, to various cities like uh, Milwaukee and and that to to sell his medicine. Oh, he made medicine. Yes, he, he made his own medicine. And do you have any children? Right? Uh, yes, yes, I have uh, seven living children right now. Could you give us their names, please? Uh, yes. Uh, my oldest son's name is uh, David Wayne Boyd. And uh, my daughter, uh, Rebecca Boyd. And uh, Douglas Boyd. Camarita Talavera. Henrietta Talavera. Eutimio Talavera, Jr. And Henrietta Talavera. Oh, do and they, they live here? Yes, they all live. They all live up, here. Up here. And uh, were you married, Harriet? Yes, I was married uh, twice. Um, I, f I was married to a Menominee Indian first, Leslie E. Boyd, but he passed away. And then uh, a second marriage to a Hispanic named Eutimio Talavera, Sr. Um, did your grandparents ever talk about their education, if they had any? Well, I remember my, my grandmother Eunice quite well. I mean, she was the kind, uh, she didn't believe, and, and she refused to, to talk English. She uh, refused to learn English. She could speak, you know, broken English, but she didn't, uh, she preferred that one I would be spoken in her in her home, and uh, my grandfather uh, Wilson Anton, he died at a young age, um, long before I was born, and uh, she then, uh, as Oneida tradition, his uh, brother Nathaniel Anton had came into the house and, and helped her raise the children because she had several children. There. I don't recall if they married or not, but I know he was there like as long as I can remember. Do you remember the names of the other children, your mother's brothers and Yes, sisters? yes. Uh, there was uh, Israel Antone and Kate Antone, Emma Antone, <coughs> and Hanson Antone, Viola Antone, um, Celia, Cecilia Antone. Mike Antone, Mary Antone, Danforth, 
and uh, Lillian Anton. So, besides my mother, Cynthia. Your mother's name was Cynthia? Cynthia Eve Anton, yes. Anton. And um, what does um, your mother's dog, uh, was she married? And uh, who was her husband? Your father? Uh, Lloyd Francis Kindness. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's right, you gave me their names mm -hmm. before. Okay. Um, Did your uh, uh, your mother ever talk about uh, if she had to go away to school or anything, any education that she had? I don't uh, believe uh, she went to school very much. Maybe up to sixth or seventh grade was all that she went. She more or less had to go and live with her older sisters to help out with uh, the, the household and their children. Uh, her her nep nieces and nephews. So she, her education was uh, very minimal, and uh, I guess that this, there wasn't that many schools, you know, of, uh, available at that time, and they had to travel, you know, over through fields and, and uh, you know things. There was no room. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I, I, oh. I don't know. I know it was in Oneida some, some place, but I know she didn't go very long and her older sisters moved away and like her older sister Kate moved to uh, Gresham somewhere and uh, that's where my mother then later on met my father oh. in, logging, in a logging camp. So your, your father was originally uh, worked in a logging camp? Yes. Mm -hmm. and, uh, did he work there very long? Uh, no, because it was kind of like seasonal seasonal work and then he would have to to go, you know, maybe just do odd jobs at other uh, areas. But we, he built a, a, a house and, and uh, a log house in Gresham there, or in Red Springs, I'm sorry, and that's where they they lived. Did you always live in Red Springs then, or did you go somewhere? Uh, no, during the, the uh, relocation uh, process, or, or time, uh, my father just uh, put in an application, and he, I believe they applied for, for money to, to move uh, this the one company that did hire him in Chicago was the one that he wanted to go to. So we moved to uh, Chicago because there was no work in in, uh, in Morgan Siding or Red Red Springs. This relocation program was that a government program? Yes, yes, it was. So they they paid for you to go to Chicago. Then? Yes, yes. Yeah, how long family. did you live in Chicago? Well, I lived in Chicago uh, 50 years, and uh, so you were quite young when you moved. To yes, Chicago, yes, and I remember getting off the the train station, even though I was like a year and a half old. My sister and myself and my parents at that time. Okay, and what did your father do then when you moved to Chicago? Well, he had had this one uh, job at the. Uh, big, pretty big company at that time even. It was called Western Electric and it's now AT&T and it might even be something else at, at this time, I'm not sure. But that's where he started uh, his his work. And uh, he, he had a fair, my father was, he did graduate high school, you know, and, and he uh, was in the Army, uh, I mean, in the, uh, Reserve, I guess the Army Reserve. So he went away into the service at a, as soon as he was 18. And I guess he learned a few trades while while he was there, and, and except during, you know, the war time. He was, uh, and actually it wasn't the, the Army, it was the Navy, and, and he was a cook on the Navy ships. And that, but he also learned other trades. And, uh, my father was much older than, than my mother at the time. 
So he was already like in his 40s when he had applied for the uh, position at um, Western Electric Company. And it was a huge company that, that located in Cicero, Illinois. And did you go to school then in Chicago? Yes, <coughs> yes. I went to grade school and then I went on to uh, high school. And I first attended a, an all an all girl school for, I believe it was eight months or so. It was called Lucy Flower Te Technical School. But then we moved to a different part of the city. And so I had to transfer out and I, I graduated from uh, Harrison High School. Did you go on to school after that then? Uh, no, no, I chose to uh, well, our family was still kind of poor. We had, my mother had like six children and um, we didn't have that much uh, of an income even though both of my parents were, were working. The cost of living is quite high there. and uh, So I just chose to, you know, Try to be on my own as early as Did possible. Did you get a job then? Yes, yes. I worked at the uh, Merchandise Mart in Chicago. It was my first job. And um, I worked several places after that up until I got married when I was 19. And, uh, Did you work outside the home even after you were married? Yes. And your husband's name was what? Leslie, Leslie Boyd. Leslie Boyd? Yes. Mm -hmm. And what did he do? He was just uh, a general factory or common laborer and that. And, and he was monogamous? Yes. Mm -hmm. And were your children all born in Chicago then? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. But now, you, now they all live here? Yes. Back to your uh, grandmother, you said that she uh, only talked to Nida? Uh, yes, Eunice, uh, she spoke a uh, uh, very uh, broken English uh, and whenever my my mother, you know, would, we would go to vacations uh, and spend some time with my grandmother. My mother also spoke fluent Oneida and and that's how they would talk, you know, and, and we never learned Oneida because, uh, in, in our home because uh, my father was a different kind of Indian, so it was never spoken at, at our home, and the only time I actually ever heard it was when my grandmother and my mother's and her sisters, they would all, you know, come, you know, all get together and, and they would talk. Speak the language, and, and my grandmother, she... Uh, she just never had the desire to, to learn English, and she was really old-fashioned, you know, she wouldn't... She did all her cooking on a on a wood, wood stove, and and she had the uh, wood heater, or, yeah, a wood, a wood stove that heated her house, and she didn't have electricity, there was, uh, she used oil lamps, and uh, had outhouses, no plumbing, you know, whatsoever we always seen her uh, bring in pails of water you know, whenever she used it and even later on she had all those uh, those things in her in her home you know like plumbing and that but she just uh, she refused to use her electric stove or whatever and she continued to her her, her wood stove to bake and cook and did she have a well on her property then? Yes, she did. Mm -hmm. So she didn't have to haul the water too far? No, no. <laughs> did she ever um, talk about any kind of herbs? You mentioned that some, your grandfather was a uh, Yes, man? but uh, my my uh, father, my grand, I'm sorry, my grandfather, Homer Kindness, he, he had died the, the year I was born, but it was earlier, so I never knew him. And after um, my I would say my great, or my uncle, uh, great uncle Nathaniel Antone, after he passed on, she then married uh, Robinson Jacobs. 
and he was a medicine man as as well and and I never seen him that much you know to actually you know sit down and talk herbs but I know he always made medicine and people would travel from like even Milwaukee to to get his uh, medicine and her. he had yeah. healing powers and was, was things he, like that. Was Robinson Jacobs, was he in Oneida? I think so, yes. I think I did see his name in the allotment book at one time. So, and uh, both of my great-grandparents were also allottees of the, the Dolls Allotment Act. Are you employed here? Yes. And where do you work? I work at the uh, Division of Land Management. Now and I do uh, probate and administrative assistant uh, work, and I've been there about eight years now. And prior to that, I worked at the uh, title search uh, office, and about four years, I, I would say. And uh, they just moved in with with the land office, so I've been total. Working with land, Oneida land records, about 12 years. Oh, okay. Yeah. You remember any of the, the holidays that uh, you celebrated when you were young, when you were living with your parents? The holidays? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Can uh, you tell us a little bit about those holidays? Um, you mean like... Uh, Christmas and New Year's? Yes. Uh, we always had the traditional, you know, the Christmas dinner and the, even New Year's we always had a big dinner and we were a close-knit family. Uh, my father always, you know, insisted that we be, you know, close to one another and kind of look after, you know, like if anything, you know, should happen to my sister, I should help her out, you know, to take care of her and vice versa, and so we always ate together. My mo uh, my mother would never allow us, you know, like to just make a sandwich and go off if we were going to eat. We all had to wait and sit down at the, the dinner table, and we all had a uh, had meal and ate at the same time. And your brothers and sisters were who? Uh, there was Madeline Kindness, and... Uh, Douglas Kindness, Elliot Kindness, and I have a, a twin sister and brother, the, who are twins, are Mildred and Maurice, but they still live in Chicago. They have not yet thought about moving up home here. And that, that was your family then? Yes, uh -huh, my sisters and brothers. Okay. And uh, did the rest of them live here? Yes. Uh -huh. And are they all still living there? Uh, Elliot is uh, deceased and, and Madeline is deceased, but uh, my brother Doug and I, uh, we're the only two of, of this. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then you have the sister and brother, the twin sister and brother in Chicago. Yes, yes, they, they stayed in Chicago. Mm -hmm. What about... Um, The other holidays that you might have celebrated besides Christmas and New Year's? Uh, like Easter, well, my mother always like bought us. She was kind of religious, you know, and, and we, we had to go to church, you know, twice a week. And um, But like Easter particular, we, had, we all had a, a new, you know, suit of clothes or outfit or dress and that. And we went to church with her. And she was of uh, Lutheran faith, but sometimes she would attend Methodist uh, parishes too. But we uh, we had to go to church twice a week, and um, I I remember uh, sometimes she would you know uh, would would say she didn't want us to 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 chum around with certain kids, you know, we had to be, she was very particular of our friends and who we associated with and and even though we lived on, on a very, very 
uh, well, just around the corner from Skid Row, we'd have to walk through, you know, come out of our home and, and walk down at least a block and a half through Skid Row, and we'd see several, you know, of the um, unfortunate, you know, souls of people that were, you know, just you know, drunk and homeless and everything, and and that we had to walk that way every day to go to school. And so I, um, my mom would always tell us, well, this is why you have to be so selective with, you know, your friends and who you associate with. And what that. do you, um, what do you think about the elderly programs that the tribe has? I think it's, it's, uh, um, I, I would say it's very, we're very fortunate, you know, to have some of the, the, the programs and, and, um, Is that why you moved back? I mean... No, no, actually I, I'm, I moved, uh, back here, uh, in 1990, uh, because my husband had, uh, the company, uh, that he had worked for for 12 years, of which he was a supervisor for nine of those, uh, Twelve years, they sold out to to an overseas uh, company, and so he was just lost his job and became very, you know, unhappy and kind of depressed about it. And at the same time, I had uh, three of two of my children were teenagers in Chicago, and although the area, well, we had lived in that the same apartment about. 10 years, but the neighborhood had begun to to go down, I mean, you know, really lose value and, and that, and there were a lot of gang activity of, like, right ne beginning to be right next door, there was a lot of drug dealing, and I didn't want my children to be part of that, and so particularly when my husband um, lost his job, then we had no place to go, you know, we were going to go out to California, you know, but then we decided to come up here first to see. Yeah, what year was that? When you came here? 1990. 1990. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then you, and you've been here then? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. And your children all moved with you here? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they weren't very happy about it, you know, they, they just didn't understand, you know, the, yeah. you know, how the, how dangerous it was to, to live in uh, Chicago. What it never used to be like that when I was uh, growing yeah. up there. You know, it was all really different. But, Change. Uh, it changed. It changes so fast all the time. What would you uh, tell the youth of today? Well, I would. Uh, what exactly what I try to tell my children is, uh, I know it's not easy being Indian particularly when you grow up around, you know, went away from home like, like I did. I, I grew up with uh, several different nationalities and there were a lot of blacks and uh, a lot of uh, whites and then at the time in the early 50s there was an influx of people from the south that moved into Chicago had, who had a different type of culture although they were white and then there were Puerto Ricans that came from Puerto Rico, I guess, and they were all, you know, looking for work, for jobs, too. So, um, I always tell my children, I said, regardless of what other people think of you and your heritage, I said, I know it's not easy being an Indian, having all this stereotype things, you know, said about us, I said, that it's not true and it's just meant to to degrade you and the only defense that you have is books. I said, make sure you do a lot of reading and, and read difficult things that, that you don't understand and try to, to learn to understand it. So you think the education? To the, yes. Yes, exactly. Is there anything we missed? Okay, can you make it here? Okay. Okay, well, thank you. Okay, it was my Glad pleasure. Glad you did this interview okay. with us. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You have a good one, huh?